Okay, let's take a look inside. I'm only looking inside because uh, I need to, I got a battery warning and the, the it's actually really well done. It's a simple design. It's a single circuit board and it has all these removable connectors on it and the top is uh, looks like a piece of of uh, like plexiglass with a printed printed uh, silk screen on the top and all of the individual serial numbers are actually printed on the, the front foot cover. It's just held in with regular probably about M3 screws. So I got everything disconnected. I took the top off and I got the battery warning because there's not a battery in it and it uses a CR2032 battery which didn't come with the unit. I didn't know that but I just happened to have one of these things. So we'll go ahead and put it in. We didn't read about that or see about that anywhere. Let's see if I can get this in here. Figure out how to get it in there. Alright, there we go. So that's in there. So let's just take a look around. You know, I don't know if you're here for the woodworking or the embedded side, but I'll just kind of give a pointer out here. So this is the microprocessor. It looks like it's a 144 quad fly pack. And uh, I don't know what's under there. I'm not going to take that sticker off. I'm not that interested. It's probably, a, I don't know what it is, LPC or STM or something like that. And along the side here are socketed opto couplers, through hole parts, which is great. So if you inadvertently blow one of these out, uh, you can actually replace the individual optocoupler and not have to do any surface mount rework. And then there's some driver circuits down here. It looks like every port itself has a driver circuit, which is probably a, like a 245 or something like that. Uh, what else is there? Here's the uh, DC to DC power supply right here. It looks like there's some additional functionality. Um, that's not populated here and also over here then there was some other connector that was right here but here's the VGA cable two USBs and um, the uh, the cover here has uh, two holes in the back for the power lights and then those just shine through uh, silk screen red and green here and those are just propagated I mean uh, populated uh, through hole parts right here so I got the battery back in. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good, actually. There is, looks like the, this is the uh, external digital I.O. connector on this side. And it looks like there's some protection diodes over here for anti-shock, which is a good design. Um, and this this is the, uh, for the uh, MPG here. Uh, it looks like there is a, probably a, reverse polarity protection diode over here uh, and this uh, Wi-Fi radio is pre-populated it's ESP 07S which is what I thought it was and then this uh, has the capability or actually requires uh, an external antenna so it does have that connector right there and I have a Maso uh, V3 Rev04 alright let's put it back together turn it on and let's see if it's gonna work now I'll do that and I'll be right back now, I guess it's pretty common when you put a new battery in that you get that air and I did watch uh, the installation video that uh, Peter did at the Maso site so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on and there's like a little powering procedure to get it to clear that battery air but I, I've got that clear, so we should boot up fine right now. Which we did, now it's asking me for the password. And the default password is HTG. And we're in. Okay, so let's see if the touchscreen actually works. I mean, it looks like it tracks my finger. There we go. Here's a setup screen. Program an MDI. Looks like it's pretty dang responsive. No USB pen drive connected. 
doing our jog see if we can clear the e-stop we can't because it's not configured correctly but other than that I think it's looking pretty good all right well that's it for now um, we'll continue on okay thanks for watching